Joining us in studio, Cecilia Russell, ANN7 Special Projects Editor, Adil Nchabeleng is a President of Transform RSA, and Matthew Zaramusi is a Tau National Sector Coordinator for Aviation. And uh, we have Zamo Mazala, he is a Black Empowerment Foundation spokesperson. Good evening to you and thanks so much for joining us. I mean, it's too soon to celebrate, I think, but the victory is the fact that now it's out in the public domain and we hopefully will get to the root as to what has been bleeding SAA for so long. Cecilia, your view. Yes, certainly. I think that this has been a great day in a way because the narrative has changed. You know, it's been a one-sided blame game to one person. And in actual fact, the, the, the information today was very interesting. You know, it went right back to Coleman Andrews talking about how he sold, uh, you know, the fleet, how they, they, only nine, nine airplanes that they own at the moment out of their fleet of 60. They're leasing back all the rest. How this is crippling them, costing them billions every year in lease, lease back. So um, just in terms of the financials, it was interesting. It was interesting, in fact, that... Um, a whole range of things around a, a, a um, that AAR um, uh, contract came out um, that um, that the acting CEO was potentially involved in the agreement that 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 tender should go to AAR with an empowerment partner that nobody seems to know about. So while while there was information out there as well, there, it was also a situation where. There was not so much information. So uh, Temba Gordy, the, the, the chairperson, said, you have to bring all of these things in. This report, which is the, um, you know, on the AAR, has to come into, uh, come into play. All those evergreen contracts, those, those you know, the, the pampered pilots, everything was just, it was all just laid out one after the other. You have to bring them in. These are what, this is what we want to know about. And I think this is great because I think that, a, I think that ANN 7 certainly had a lot to do with exposing what was really going on behind the scenes at, at, yeah. at SA. And, and when you know you've done a good job, but it really feels rewarding because it's almost has Hashtag country duty, you know, uh, the evergreen contracts that were spoken about is that at SAA culturally is to extend and to renew contracts, to exclude uh, uh, new players and historically disadvantage, as uh, uh, Chairperson Tutumieni was saying. I mean, I was totally flabbergasted. Look, this is a day where we should actually now celebrate having a democratic state whereby when civil societies and concerned you know, institutions can start raising issues and these issues can find themselves because when we started this battle with SAA, it was a battle based on the fact and fundamentals that there is a huge amount of gross maladministration, there's an amount of gross overspending, there's an amount of actually gatekeeping that makes it very clear that black suppliers are not allowed into the value chain to be procurement suppliers towards SAA. So when you see this kind of information now coming out, and because we took on this matter, if you, if you can recollect, we've been a year on this particular issue. And throughout the whole period of exposing what has been happening in terms of the rot, the misadministration, the wasteful expenditure, and the cushy opportunities that people have found themselves into using state and public finance and spending. Mm -hmm. You cannot have an uh, airline that spends billions, but yet the people on the ground do not benefit of anything. And there is a level of massive corruption. And today at Parliament, Parliament has shown us that it can do its job. And we must congratulate Parliament for taking on this matter, particularly Scopa, for taking on the aspect of literally looking into this matter. And to a point whereby even the issue of telecom being sold as the state asset to bail SAA, which is not necessary in this case, has come out and actually has been revealed. Mm. But, but who then will be held accountable? The question also came up that executive tends they tend to move, see greener pastures or redeployed elsewhere, uh, that the current board uh, and the management there may not necessarily be the one who created the problems within SAA. Well, clearly they didn't create the problems in SAA. I mean, I think that's, that's perfectly clear. I mean, even just following today's proceedings, <clears throat> talking about Coleman Andrews, talking about you know, the, the, legacy prob the legacy problems that SAA is dealing with um, uh, over time. Um, and that is a problem because we've had so many CEOs, acting CEOs, it's been a revolving door of management. So nobody has been held accountable. Hopefully the new CEO, which um, Ludi Mayeni announced today, is due to start on the 1st of September and they expect him. Hopefully he will, you know, I think some people are, 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 are pessimists that he'll never be able to resolve anything. But hopefully he will, you know, systematically move his way through that whole organization. Look at all the procurement. Look at the Evergreen project um, um, contracts um, ensure that uh, you know that that people who have been paid more than their due are fixed. 
ensure that they, where there's corruption, that, that people are charged, not only within the organization, but criminally as well, so mm. that they make sure that, that, that where, where, where people have you know, you know, not obeyed the law, and that when people have ignored the PFMA and what have you, that they are dealt with in a disciplinary process. Yeah, uh, and we're joined by Zamo Madala, spokesperson for Black Empowerment uh, Foundation. Zamo, thanks so much for your time. Just what, what do you make? I mean, what clearly came out was that there is absolutely... Uh, downright looting what was going on at SAA where invoices are paid without being signed. There are no contracts. It's just assumed because this company has been there for 40 odd years uh, that they, they have a sense of entitlement of doing business with the SOE. Well, we, we, we are very grateful to have the opportunity to actually state our word. And our first action of gratefulness is the fact that um, the, the deputy minister sat there and he actually began to acknowledge where the basis of SAA problems, problems actually began. And it, it goes far back and it goes as early as 2001, 2002. So it does not all rest with what we has been sold now as in to do me any this, to do me any that. So there's, there's a whole lot. And what we respect is the fact that Scopa has said they will call everybody to account from the days of Saki Matozoma because that is where the true SAA program problems actually begin. We, we cannot continue to lie to ourselves and, and ignore where the problems of our, our national airline actually began. We've got a root depletion of an asset that used to exist within the state. And then it was transferred from one department to the next to the next. And what we realized, and it has actually just happened, what Scopa is doing is they're still dealing with 2016 problems. We've just arrived last weekend at the problem where our air flights were grounded within the, within the country of Zimbabwe. And what happened is that the Department of Transport had to come in so where should SAA actually be sitting? As we are talking right now, SAA should be sitting with the Department of Transport, which also controls AXA, which also controls who flies within our shores. Mm. We have opened up our shores like there is no tomorrow. We have been opened up our country for others to make profit of our profitable routes at the expense of our own airline. And then we keep on trying to blame one individual, and we seem to think that the, there's a chairperson who's God and almighty amongst it all, just because that particular chairperson came to challenge transformation, which includes evergreen contracts, and those evergreen contracts come from the days of when the pilots were secured. So we've been running an airline that has a positive cash flow, but constantly our government has had to keep on propping it up with cash. And the reason we've been keeping on up having to prop it up with cash is because we have not been driving what meant to have been our mandate from day one, which is we need transformation within our entire infrastructural program Mm. We also need to look at how our businesses have been structured to benefit the entire population of this country. Yeah, Zamo, just now please stay on the on... line. We have Matthew Ramosi, Satawa National uh, Sector Coordinator for Aviation. Uh, uh, Ramosi, uh, I suppose with the uh, trade, uh, uh, the Union of Transport and Allied Workers is, is something that you've always lamented, that the airline in itself is making money, there's bums on seats, but uh, the money is not necessarily benefiting one workers, except uh, for the pilots, uh, of course. And the fact that, uh, you know, it doesn't need to be on uh, a consistent bailout uh, structure. What is your view on proceedings today? Thanks, Cindy. Indeed, uh, today is, uh, it was a good day for workers, even though we were uh, a bit disappointed that uh, there was a delay uh, from the members of SAA in making sure that the parliament has this uh, report that we've been saying, look, they are very taming and making sure that the airline uh, uh, is not profitable. Uh, 
uh, making sure that management themselves, they are not complying with certain regulations and they make sure that they violate even procurement uh, uh, processes in making sure that few individuals benefit. So indeed we are happy and we are hoping that the parliament uh, is going to fast track so that South Africans can know exactly who are those who are uh, looting the FAA, uh, those who are responsible in making sure that this airline uh, uh, is, is definitely uh, on the wrong side of, 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 of South Africa, meaning that uh, they want to, to shift the blame and make it a, an individual issue that uh, the certain particular individual is the one that's making an ally, uh, not to be profitable. And again, I think it is, it is important uh, that the parliament already noted again that the problem of SAA that uh, did not start yesterday, uh, it's been there for years, even before 1994, when we, uh, some of us, as much as we're young, uh, see democracy. So I think... That on its own, it will definitely assist uh, uh, to make sure that the culprits are brought to book mm. and those who are responsible can account for this. Mr. Ramos, so just stay on the line. It's going to be a lengthy process considering how far um, the, the rot has, has been in place at, at SAA and the number of reports that have been there collecting dust. Uh, Adil, your hope in, while Scope are now getting the, the, the necessary documentation and way forward. I think right now a process which one must start immediately is a speedily process of implementation of the reports that have already been provided. There are massive amount of forensic reports that have been provided. Already two reports, which are forensic reports questioning the legalities of various contracts, which means other contract suppliers like AAR must actually be taken into consideration. The Ernest and Young contract based on the potential corruption relationship between ANR as well as SAA representative must ensue. ENS already re re released a forensic report which says that the board is legally obliged to report all alleged criminal activities to the police. And here, very person of South African Airways uh, technical board member said that a clear hidden agenda in ANR and SAA relationship must now be investigated. So the reports are very clear as to what must be done. The actions that must ensue to ensure that we bring back SAA to its profitability. Remember that SAA makes a lot of money. Suppliers are paid on time. People who are borrowing SAA money are paid on time, but the airline itself bleeds money. So it does not make sense. It's an aspect of mismanagement of resources, and here is state-based resources and finance. So the state does not need to be continuously bailing out SAA when SAA is a profitable organization, but mismanaged. So we need to see action happening. SCOPA cannot just hear all the alleged allegations and do not instruct <coughs> and issue out a very clear mandate as to what must be done to recover this misuse of public finances and money that belongs to the people of South Africa. Yeah, and uh, there's no time prescription when it comes to uh, mismanagement or uh, um, inappropriate, impropriety rather of, of state funds. I'm, I'm just trying to think of Saki Gozoma at the time. I think he was chair of uh, Transnet. And in my previous life, you'd have a situation where aircraft are sort of stuck mm -hmm. on any part of the world and there's there's no inventory, there no, there's no stock yeah. to fix it, for example, you know, which means your stay in that particular place is extended and you have to earn your SNT you know, and accommodate passengers as well. But it's gone on for so long, Cecilia. That's for me, you know, I don't get it. It's just, it's become like second nature. This is well, how things are done. It's because, it's because of the Evergreen contracts. It's because where new contracts are signed or not, you know, like the AAR, which is a fairly unusual thing that the finally it got signed, even though it's in, a, it's in court at the moment. I think, the, I think it's Air France that has taken them to court because Air France, I think, was the preferred bidder as far as that is concerned. But, you know, I think that there's, there's just vested interests on vested interests. I mean, why would you want to give up something that pays on time? You know, you've got contracts that go on for 20 years, get renewed on a month-to-month -month basis. What are you giving up? You're giving up, you know, the thing about, you know, one of the things that comes out quite clearly in those reports is that if you have a, 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 a contract that is properly signed, SAA can negotiate uh, terms and conditions that benefit SAA. Mm -hmm. This is not, if you don't have a contract that's signed, um, there's no guarantee that the, that the contract is going to benefit um, SAA. So it only benefits the supplier. They, su they supply, you know, everything. I mean, for their, you know, wheelchairs, people that get, ta you know, the whole thing is, 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 is crazy. They, there's, SAA does, you know, the SAA kind of has, has the insignia because they don't own the air, 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 aircraft. 
They, they don't supply the food that goes into it. They don't do the maintenance. You know, so it's, it's an airline, airline essentially, that doesn't yeah. have the, the most basic of, of equipment of, to run an airline, i.e. And, and, yeah. and one of the, the people pointed that out. Mm. It said in, 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 in today, it said, you know, <clears throat> this is not really an air, air, airline that owns anything, that, that anything belongs to it. It's, it's, it's almost uh, empty in a, in a way. So in order to fill it up again, it's going to have to start owning its own planes. But it's by design, plane, because yes. when you say Bain & Company being yes. uh, the strategic yes. partners in advising uh, SAA and yes. in, in, uh, stream uh, aligning the, the business, yes. on paper it looked very good. And yes. I mean, Coleman Andrews, whom we used to call Conman Andrews, by the way, yeah. and this was uh, private <laughs> jokes, yeah. and, you know, got a golden handshake. He was on diplomatic status. Uh, his kids went to international schools, etc., all at the expense of the state. Yeah. I, I don't even know if that would be able to recover all of that. They won't, but Not they can still recover the course. debt that is owed to SAA. SAA owes about 13.8 billion right now. If they were to do a thorough audit, they will find that there was a wasteful and some of the products that were actually invoiced were not fully actually be, uh, provided to SAA. So a lot of money can be recovered out of SAA. The contracts like, for instance, the evergreen contracts for pilots, as well as all these other expenses that are not necessary, can be kept in SAA and bring back SAA to profitability. The other aspect of it is driving the element of making sure that we buy and we source the goods for SAA locally. The two elements that runs an efficient airline, by the way, is two issues, your fleet and your fuel. If they can start looking at the aspect of the fleet where they can start owning their own fleet rather than leasing it at a higher cost and rate. A and then the fuel aspect. A year to a 3 .5 billion. I mean, it's a huge amount of money. Which airline will survive with a 3.5 billion lease? Uh, what do you call it, a contract on an annual basis. So fleet is key to critical. They need to look at the aspect of the fleet. They must own and they must actually make sure that the maintenance remains within South Africa. The second one is the fuel aspect of it. By the way, SAA can take a, a plane from Johannesburg and fly a twin engine into Bloemfontein. Why would you do that? In the airline industry, nobody does that because you're wasting. When you fly twin engine airline, it means your fuel is actually consumed. Those particular uh, planes only fly on long haul distances. So your fuel consumption itself. I do. Yes, do we're going to watch the space and, of course, looking at uh, opportunities primarily for uh, new entrants uh, in the uh, airline or aviation space. Thanks so much. Uh, Adilin Chavileng is Transform RSA president. And we had Matthew Zaramosi, Satao National Sector Coordinator in Aviation. And uh, also Zamor Madala, spokesperson for the uh, Black Empowerment Foundation. Cecilia Russell is a special projects editor for ANN7. Thanks for watching. We're back after this.